What's up, digital marketing agency owners? On today's video, I wanna talk about one of the biggest challenges we face as the owners of agencies, which is client churn and client cancellations. And on this video, I wanna talk about the number one reason clients leave, more importantly, how you can avoid it. So if that sounds good, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. So when we think about client churn, right, and all the energy we put into getting the client to sign up on a monthly retainer and all the work we do to set up their website and get them ranked and arrive the traffic and to, to really generate the results and make it rain for them, it can really, really hurt when we get that call or we get that email and the client says, hey, we're going in a different direction. We've decided to move on. Uh, and so I've made it a, a mission of mine to really understand why clients leave and, and really to help arm digital marketing agencies and myself with the best strategies to retain clients at the highest level possible. So just curious, and let me know in the comments, when you think about why your clients are leaving, right? When they're canceling, what is it? What is the reason that you found? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think that it is. Um, and I'm gonna tell you based on research that's been done as well as what we've seen in our own digital marketing agency, the number one reason clients leave is perceived indifference, right? At the end of the day, they're leaving because they feel like you've taken them as far as you can go and you're starting to treat them like a number. Like if they did cancel and if they did go a different direction, you might not notice, you probably wouldn't even care. And when they start to feel that way, when they start to feel that sense of perceived indifference, um, the game is over, right? They're moving in a different direction. Now, the good thing about knowing that is if that's the reason they're leaving, we can prioritize our client service model. We can prioritize our account management strategy to absolutely avoid this number one reason because there's no reason a client should feel that you don't care, right? So I'm gonna talk about some key strategies you can put in place to avoid that. Now, when we think about retention, there's always this balance that has to be in place. There's this balance between what I call results and service. And really, a lot of times when we first start our agencies and we first get into this, we think it's all about the result. And we're like all prioritized around how do we get them more leads? How do we get them more sales? How do we make it rain for the client? And we focus, focus, focus on results. But the reality is if you have amazing results for the client, but they don't feel the results, they don't feel a relationship with you, they don't think you're responsive and providing great service, a lot of times, even if they're getting great results, they'll cancel. Now, at the same time, if you've got amazing service, like maybe you're the nicest company in the world, you've got amazing account managers, and you send your clients gifts and goodies, and they love you, they love you like a friend, they love you like a family member, but there's no results, inevitably they're gonna cancel as well, right? You can't just provide a great feeling service without generating the results. So there truly is a balance that needs to be found within your agency where you're providing great world-class results, tangible measurable return on investment, and creating an amazing experience and managing that client relationship. Give me a one in the comments here if that, if that jives with you, if that makes sense, and kind of that, that balance that you have to strike in your business. You can't just focus on results and you can't just focus on the service that you provide. So knowing that, really the key to avoid perceived indifference, the key to really making them um, stay long term is how effective you communicate on an ongoing basis. Now, in another video, I talked all about world-class onboarding and how we come out of the gates effectively for the client. What you do in your onboarding will take you a long ways in the business relationship. But if we want them to stay with us for years uh, on a monthly retainer-based service, we have to be very proactive with that communication process. And all too often, I see agencies, again, focused on the results side of the equation, and so they're busy working, right? Them and their team are focused on getting the site ranked or driving better traffic or optimizing the conversion factors on the site. And so they're focused on the result but they're not communicating with the client. And so you have to make sure that you've baked into your process where you're letting the client know, hey, here's what we've worked on. Hey, here's the results that we're seeing. And ideally, a communication rhythm that involves one-to-one -one interaction with the client, where you're on Zoom and they're on Zoom and you're showing them and you're getting feedback 
and they know that you care, they know that you're working, they know the results that they're getting, and when you do that, you can massively reduce the perceived indifference. Um, and I really feel like the main thing you wanna think about and you wanna bake into your account management process, whether it's you, uh, an account management director or a team of account managers, is you have to let them know that they're getting re re great results and you gotta make it clear what the results are, but then you also have to make them feel loved, pursued, and cared for. And I, and I mean that literally, right? Because there's so many other agencies trying to get their business, right? They're getting called 10 times a day. They're getting intelligent direct mail. They're getting emails with like personalized videos, right? There's lots of options for them. And so if you don't really show that you care, it's very easy for them to take their business elsewhere. So um, really, when it comes to your reporting process and this monthly review process, uh, I've got another video that walks through what you should be reporting on a monthly basis to the client. And I think the big mistake I see ha happen often here is the account manager thinks it's just about going through the report. And so they'll pull up whatever reporting system you have, whether it's a ranking report, whether it's a KPI report, even if it's a good ROI based report, and they think it's just, hey, Mr. Customer, you spent this amount, you generated this many leads, and here's your results, right? And maybe they believe it, maybe they don't, maybe they perceive value of that, maybe they don't. But what we're finding is most of your clients, if that's all you talk about on the meeting, will disengage with that meeting process, there'll be no connection, and they're gonna, they're gonna feel that perceived indifference, even if you're meeting with them monthly, even if you were doing that with them weekly. And so you wanna make sure that those monthly meetings are a time to connect, a time to understand their goals and kind of their challenges, a time to get feedback on, here's what our report says, are you seeing those results? And a time to collaborate and say, hey, based on what you're telling me and what we're seeing, here's some changes we're gonna make either with our content or with our paid strategy or with the budget in order to meet you where you're at. And then usually ends up with the recap of like, here's what we're gonna work on, here's what you need to work on, and next time we meet, here's what we're gonna be looking towards. If you can move your meetings that your account managers hold from just a review of the, of the data to that type of meeting, the client's gonna really understand the value. They're gonna feel like it's a, a partnership and they're gonna be much more likely to stay with you long term. Now, really, at the end of the day, we don't wanna over-report. And this is another problem I see other agencies get into is they wanna just lean on the data, and so they're running a ranking report, they've got analytics, maybe they've got conversion tracking metrics, they've got you know, pay-per-click data, and they wanna give 100 different data points to the client. What I found is less is more when it comes to your reporting. For the client, they just really wanna know how much did they spend, how many leads did I generate, what's my return on investment? Now, you want that to be what you report, but at the same time, you do need to do that other stuff. You need to make sure that it's a collaborative two-way conversation. And so what we found works best is going from all of that data to like a really simplified reporting mechanism where they can quickly log in or you can send them a screenshot of how much they spent, 5,000 bucks in this case, how many leads they generated, 503, what their average cost per lead is, $11.27. That way they can wrap their head around that. What am I spending with you and what am I actually getting in return? And then what's my return on investment? And you can use great tools nowadays and there's some data that you can just automatically match or you can use automations to say, well, based on that, that we think that your projected ROA should be $122,000, which is a 20 time return on investment. I, re I really want to encourage you, try and boil down your reporting in that way so the client can clearly see, not like, okay, I'm spending a certain amount, I don't even know how much it is, I'm getting a result, I hope, but where they can clearly see like, okay, here's how much I spent, here's what my return on investment is, and then have a great business conversation with them around how you're gonna to continue to move them towards the goals and objectives that they're after. Type KPIs here in the comments if, if that makes sense and kind of if you can hit these KPIs in a very concise way, that's going to be much better than having mountains of data and mountains of reports that you show the client that just confuse them, maybe frustrate them, maybe get them focused on the wrong things. I know in our business, plumbing and HVAC SEO, this was a big challenge. We would run this long ranking report and of course we submit the ranking report and then the client's like, hey, why don't I come up for this random keyword? How come these keywords aren't ranking? as opposed to really focusing on how much did we spend, what's the return on investment.
Hopefully that distinction makes sense. We really want to make sure the reporting is very, very clear and to the, and to the point. Now, as it, as it relates to the other information, I suggest lead with the key performance data, right? Really lead with that information I just showed you and then have the other stuff ready because not every one of your clients is a type D personality. Most of them are. If the business owner, you know, personality type D says, hey, I'm glad that you guys are doing this for us. I'm paying you a fee to make this happen. I just need to know the data. I just need to know I'm getting a return on investment, right? That type D personality just wants this high level information. What we have found as we work with larger companies, like if we kind of go from the $5 million company to the $10 million client, the bigger client typically has a marketing director involved or somebody that's, their main job is to look at this data and to make sure that you're doing a good job. And you need to work differently with that individual client than the type D business owner. Like a marketing manager wants to get into the data. They do want to see the ranking report. They do want to see the analytics. They do want to know what you're doing and how you're split testing. And so you want to make sure that your account manager understands the difference of the person that they're meeting with and they can have those different types of conversations. And recognize this is one of the reasons you have to charge a little bit more for the $10 million company than you might for the $3 million company. Even if the service deliverable is practically the same, you're going to need a lot more time and energy to work with that larger company. Hopefully that makes sense. Give me a yes if that makes sense. Kind of that personality difference that you're dealing with um, from the business owner to the, the marketing director within the business. And so again, like if I can leave you with one thing, the number one reason clients leave is perceived indifference and results alone don't result in retention, right? You could be delivering amazing results, but if you're not thinking about that communication process, about what you're reporting and how you're meeting with that client and developing that relationship, you could still have high churn within your agency. And so this is all part of our client retention maximization formula. And on other videos, I've unpacked this in my book, The Client Retention Handbook. I go through this in depth, but it's about world-class onboarding, effective communication, and success management. How you build your account management team, how you train that account management team, and the key things they're doing on a month-over-month -month basis to improve client retention and reduce your monthly churn. So I hope you got great value from this video. If you got at least one idea or one takeaway, hit the like button, post that takeaway here in the comments, share this with another agency that would benefit that might be struggling with retention or might be struggling with, with high churn. Um, and be sure to subscribe for future videos like this where I'm talking about how to land clients, deliver world-class results, retain your clients at the highest level possible, and scale your agency. If you'd like some more specifics on this topic of client retention, I've put together a client retention workbook, which basically takes the key ideas from the book and kind of the, the key things you wanna make sure you're doing to improve retention. You can get that for free by going to sevenfigureagency.com slash retention dash workbook. sevenfigureagency.com slash retention dash workbook. Go check it out. It's a simple checklist that will help you execute this and get the results. Let me know your takeaways in the comments. If you have any follow-up questions or thoughts, post them as well. And I look forward to seeing you on a future video.